Have you noticed how time sprints when you're happy, but crawls when you're bored? If reality is truly objective, why does it bend like rubber every time you feel something deeply? Maybe the clock is lying, or maybe the clock is real, but only one layer of the truth. The first perspective is the objective clock, the one society trusts. 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day. It's so rigid, we build skyscrapers, run economies, and launch rockets by it. This is the time of accountants, physicists, train schedules, and alarm clocks. But the second perspective is the one you actually live the subjective clock, the one that stretches like taffy during grief and compresses into sparks during joy, the one that turns an hour of boredom into agony, but a whole weekend of passion into a fleeting breath. Ancient cultures honored this second clock. Hindus spoke of Kala, the devourer of worlds, where time was both sacred and terrifying. Buddhists described impermanence, nothing lasts, every moment slips away. Christian mystics spoke of eternity, bending into an instant when one touched the divine. Both clocks tick simultaneously, but one measures what your eyes see, the other measures what your soul feels. The tension between them is where the rabbit hole opens. Think of a funeral. The air feels heavy. Seconds drag like lead weights. The silence between words feels like hours. Grief stretches time until you want to scream. Now think of falling in love. A single night of conversation melts away into dawn. You glance at the clock and gasp. Where did the hours go? The same twelve hours measured by the wall clock are lived as two eternities. One slow, one swift, so which clock tells the truth? Doctors once sneered at it, but the placebo effect is undeniable. Patients swallow sugar pills and still heal. Why? Their expectation collapses waiting time. Their bodies accelerate processes. It's as though their minds whispered, skip ahead. And healing happens faster than biochemistry should allow. The placebo is proof. Belief bends time inside the body. There are moments when you simply know. You turn left instead of right and avoid a car accident. You walk away from a stranger who felt off. Later, you realize the logic was invisible, but the knowing was instant. Science reveals your gut contains 500 million neurons. A second brain. It doesn't think in words. It leaps. It compresses hours of analysis into a single flash. Intuition is time folded like origami. Ask an athlete about flow. They'll say the ball slowed in midair, the basket widened, the crowd noise fell silent. In the flow state, the world sharpens. Outside the arena, hours disappear. The brain, flooded with dopamine and norepinephrine, enters coherence. Movements anticipate themselves. Decisions feel effortless. Time in flow isn't measured by minutes. It's measured by rhythm, like being carried in a river. These stories crack open a startling truth. Time is not fixed. It is elastic. Physics tells us Einstein was right. Time bends. Clocks on satellites orbiting Earth run faster than clocks on the ground. Astronauts return younger than their Earth-bound twins. Speed and gravity distort the supposedly objective clock. Biology says the same. Stress hormones stretch time perception. Adrenaline slows moments into eternity. Dopamine floods during joy, compressing hours into seconds. 
Psychology agrees. Children experience summers as long and endless because everything is novel. Adults find years collapsing into blinks because life repeats routines. Novelty stretches time. Repetition erases it. Culture reveals the paradox too. Japanese haiku capture eternity in a single breath. Greek philosophers imagined Kronos, mechanical time, versus Kairos, the opportune moment where time bursts open. Indigenous traditions measure time in cycles, not lines. Time wasn't a ruler, it was a rhythm. Technology completes the picture. Slip on a VR headset. You know the skyscraper ledge isn't real, but your knees shake. Five minutes in VR can feel like an hour. Pixels convince the nervous system. Put these together and the pattern is obvious. Time is not a container. It is a rendering. Like a film projector, your consciousness sets the speed. Sometimes it drags frame by frame. Sometimes it accelerates into a blur. And here's the secret. You can shape it. Three hours doom scrolling feels hollow. Three hours writing a poem feels like touching eternity. Same three hours, different renderings. Your perception isn't a passenger, it's the painter of time. That's why monks meditate, not to escape time, but to bend it. Artists forget meals while painting. Children live in long summers, adults in short years. Time is not a straight line, it's a vortex, a spiral expanding and contracting, tuned by coherence. When you're fragmented, anxious, angry, grieving, time slows to a crawl. When you're aligned, body, mind, heart, super conscious, time flows like music. Your life isn't measured by years lived. It's measured by the coherence of time experienced. The coherence lens shifts the question entirely. Stop asking, how much time do I have? Start asking, how coherent is the time I live? Because coherence is the difference between hours wasted and hours transformed. A fragmented day is heavy, incoherent. Each task takes forever. You collapse into bed wondering, where did the day go? A coherent day is timeless. Flow carries you. You align with purpose. You look back and realize you lived fully in every minute. This isn't philosophy. It's practical. The next time you're stressed, breathe deeply. Bring body, breath and awareness into alignment. Watch how the same hour softens, stretches and flows. Reality isn't out there in the ticking clock. Reality is in the coherence of your vortex. When coherent, time bends in your favor. When incoherent, time fractures against you. Maybe this is the secret saints, sages and scientists were pointing toward. Time is neither fixed nor fake. Time is a coherence field. So next time you check the clock, don't ask what time is it, ask instead what shape is my time right now, fragmented or flowing, because your time isn't ticking, it's bending, and your life isn't measured in hours, it's measured in coherence. Follow the white rabbits, because in episode 6 we'll explore what happens when realities collide politics, religion, and the battle over whose rendering gets to rule.